Well, let's talk now to Kings Mill Bond, the energy strategist at the Rocky Mountain Institute. Uh, good to see you. Welcome back to the programme. Uh, so I don't know if you could hear our report there, um, but we were talking about how, how China is the world's largest producer and consumer of hydrogen. How has the Chinese government uh, supported that development of hydrogen energy? So, so the, the, the Chinese government has been above all supporting the development of, of green hydrogen and in fact the really interesting story in hydrogen globally now is green hydrogen to what degree you can electrolyze water split it into hydrogen and oxygen and and get uh, costs low enough and actually although your reporter didn't mention this that this this is where china is also actually leading so it looks like suddenly by the end of this decade china will be producing green hydrogen at a price comparable um, with, with, with standard production of hydrogen. And, and that is a very, very exciting moment because we've seen elsewhere in the energy transition, whenever you get cost parity, then you get uh, growth up an S curve. So what are the challenges in making both green hydrogen and regular hydrogen, if you like? Uh, you talked about the extraction, but is it also in uh, changing the whole infrastructure? So, so the, the main challenge is you have to get uh, cheap enough electricity which again China is doing out west um, with, with its southern wind farms. And then you have to get cheap enough electrolyzers to convert that electricity into hydrogen. And, and again, uh, China has uh, lower electrolyzer costs than other places in the world. So at RMI, we're very, very focused on chi China getting to 100 gigawatts of uh, electrolyzer capacity to produce around eight uh, tons of green hydrogen by 2030 at a comparable cost with standard hydrogen. And when we get to that moment, as I say, the, the, second, the second challenge will be what your reporter was talking about, which is uh, deploying hydrogen in different areas. And trucking is one area, uh, green ammonia, green steel, uh, these are other areas where you also need a lot of innovation. And again, you know, China and many other place, places are also uh, chasing after leadership in these areas. So it sounds like uh, China making strides in this area. How does uh, what China is doing uh, compare to what other countries are doing? Well, the, the standard, as, as you know, know the, the standard global playbook is that uh, Ch China in the solar industry, the wind industry, the EV industry, the battery industry has been able to develop enormous scale and drive costs down to a very low level. And once that uh, low level of cost is achieved, then, then growth it rolls out in China and indeed in other countries. And that's what we are starting to see now in the hydrogen space as well. China's actually deploying um, de deploying electrolyzers faster than other countries and getting costs down more rapidly than in other places. I mean, the, 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 the game is not yet over. The, uh, the, the battle is still being raged all over the world, but at the moment um, China's doing it more rapidly than others, as you would kind of expect. So what's, what's the future for hydrogen? Do you think it's going to, to end up superseding other forms of energy, uh, sit alongside it, or, or perhaps uh, fall short of their potential? Well, uh, hydrogen is often described as the champagne of energy. That is to say, it, it, it's, the, it's what you do for the most difficult areas. It's more expensive than other energy technologies, but it can be used in a wider variety of areas. So from, from our calculations, Hydrogen will be needed for, let's say, the last 5 to 10 percent of the energy transition. It's really actually a, a 2040s story, but you nevertheless need to build for that 2040s story. The, the real story today for what it's worth is solar, wind, uh, batteries and electrification. They're much cheaper, much easier, much better ways to solve problems, but it's highly likely we'll, we'll, we will need cheap hydrogen and, um, and, and it's good that folks are doing it. Kingsmill, great to talk to you today. Thank you very much for being on the programme. That's Kingsmill Bond from the Rocky Mountain Institute. Thank you.